Hello YouTube family, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Sharita and welcome and in today's video, we are going to dive into a good old fashioned haul, you guys, a spring haul. It was needed, all right, I must say. And y'all, this haul, wow. I mean, every last one of these are just amazing. Maybe with the exception of one, it was just kind of like meh, but all in all, like this is a really, really great haul and I am super excited to share everything that I picked up with you all. So without further ado, uh, let's jump right in. All right, so before we start, you guys, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Be sure that notification bell is turned on, set to all, so you don't miss any of my uploads. As I stated, I'll be uploading a lot more frequently throughout the week, so you just never wanna miss a video. And the last but not least, if you find any value in the content along the way, please give the video a big thumbs up as it helps my channel to grow. Okay, so, oh my God, where do we even start? All right, this one, I feel like I ordered a while back. And it just arrived because it was pre-order or did it sell out and then the batch that I ordered from was pre-order? I don't know because I saw people with this bottle um, long before I got mine the other day. So we're talking about Rosendo Matus number eight. O-M-G. That's all I got to say. We can move on to the next fragrance because O-M-G is, oh my God, that's all you need to know. <laughs> if you are looking for a sweet, seductive, a musky pineapple scent that is unisex, but leaning a little feminine, then this is one you must check out. Go ahead, get your sample. They have them available at a ZGO. I will have it linked. That's where I purchased mine. And you guys, I got it along with the sample because I was like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be smart. No more blind buying. If there's an option to blind buy, I'll pick up the bottle, but I'm going to have myself a sample if that is an option. So we start here. If we do not like it, like Butterfly by Alexander J. Okay. <laughs> if we don't like this, we're returning this unopened cellophane. It can go back. But this one, ugh, as soon as this hit my skin, I was like, oh, honey. Oh, honey, we're going to let you dry down, but then we're going to come back. Sure enough, sure enough, this is so beautiful, you guys. Uh, like, I don't want to get too deep into the woods with all the notes um, for all of these, just because we got a lot to get through. But this is very ambery. It has a very exotic, sexy, musky quality. It's quite woody. It's got some floral aspects like rose and um, some iris. So a touch of powderiness, but the fruits is what really makes this come alive. You have a very beautiful peach, citrus, and pineapple at the top and green apple. The green apple and the pineapple is what you're gonna get the most. So if you could just imagine a beautiful green apple, crisp green apple, pineapple, lush, sweet, delicious, amber woody base with some vanilla that is what you have and don't forget the sensual musk because this house right here uh, they do sensual musk like nobody's business so this was a win for me prepare to be sick of me i will be ranting and raving because this though is sweet there's a little bit of decadence the woodiness um, there is something still fresh about this fragrance. Like I said, the iris, the citruses, they do keep it from going, you know, off into the deep end, <laughs> um, and maintain a fresh quality throughout the scent. But this one is definitely a stunner. And if you were kind of on the fence thinking about, should I get it? Let me wait for, you know, what Sharita going to say. I give it the buy. <laughs> I give it the buy and I was thoroughly impressed with this one and I will be thoroughly enjoying it all spring and summer. Again, this one is Rosendo Matus number eight. So next up on the list is going to be a really popular one from the house of Stefan Umbra Lucas. And though this is new to me, it's definitely an oldie, but a goodie, um, a little polarizing. And I kind of see why I sampled it, but finally decided to pick up a bottle of Soleil de Jetta or better known as Mango Kiss. So this fragrance, I have to be honest, I really, really, really love the sample. It was a very small sample and you know, they can often be very misleading. I can say I love the sample, but this right now is a like. And I say that because the herbaceous quality in this fragrance, which I think is mostly coming from a chamomile tea, if I'm not mistaken, it leans just a little, just slightly masculine to me. Like there is definitely 
a sexy, fruity, mango quality about it for sure. Um, but it's really herbaceous. And I feel like even though I love the way this smells, I'm going to have to be in a very particular mood to wear this one. So the verdict is still out. It's a light, it's not a love. This one is just going to take some wears. And I feel like this one is one I would definitely <laughs> relegate to maybe evening wear. Not a safe line buy, okay? Uh, I'm gonna say not even safe sample. Get a five mil for this one. Get a five mil because you really need to spray this to see how strong it's gonna wear because it's quite strong. I really don't think you can get the true experience of what this is going to smell like when you've really sprayed it all over unless you spray it all over. So this one, again, Mango Kiss by Stefan Armbutt Lucas. Yeah, I mean, we're on the fence, okay? Okay, so let's get into the one that I was going to say was a disappointment. Then I tried it on again. <sighs> Easy Bake by Huda Beauty. Okay, so I have been a fan of the Easy Bake loose powders since inception, okay? And the first thing you notice about these powders when you get them is when you open them, you are hit with the most beautiful fragrance. Some people don't like fragrance in their makeup, uh, as long as it's not too strong, but there is just something absolutely gorgeous about the way these powders smell. And if you don't mind a scent in your powder or your makeup, then I don't know why you wouldn't like the way those powders smell. They just smell so feminine and pretty and beautiful. And so when they released this on April Fool's Day, mind you, because I thought it was a joke um, until I went to the website and I saw you could purchase it and then it actually showed up two days later, I realized it was real. So it was supposed to smell like the fragrance of the powder. But for some reason, you guys, this is not translating to me. This is priced at, I think, $65 for 50 mil. But it almost feels like this was not as intentional as they made it seem. Um, so according to the brand, it was like, okay, we want to make our powder fragrance into a scent. So we took all the components of that and then we added X, Y, Z and it's not translating into the powder for me. Unfortunately, I almost feel like if they had made this a powdery fragrance, maybe something a little bit more iris for, because we, you can't help but to get the texture of powdery when you're smelling the powder, of course, because it's a powder. Um, and I feel like the tuberose, it was just, this dries down to be like a powdery tuberose scent. And I don't necessarily get that from the fragrance of the powder. I feel like you can kind of smell it way in the background, but whatever they have added to the mix has a, taken over the scent a little. I really wish they could have just taken that scent as is. <laughs> and, giving it to us that way. Find a way, okay, find a way. But this one is just a little departure from the scent of the powders and I'm a little disappointed. So this one was kind of mad. It's definitely nothing you need to run out and get. If you are in the market for a very soft, easy to wear, somewhat sweet powdery tuberose, then you may enjoy this one. I definitely could have passed on it, but just to let you know, it has notes of Ylang Ylang, Heliotrope, Orchid. It's got some pear, Jasmine, and um, Gardenia at the top. And then you have a base of Dreamwood, which is like sandalwood. You've got the sugar, vanilla, coconut, amber, and moss. So yeah, it's a miss for me. This is the one I was actually a little disappointed by. But for $65, you know, at least I didn't completely ruin my bank account um, and forced to put it on my car. Okay. All right, you guys. So I'm so excited to talk about this collection here today. We are going to get into not one, not two, not three, but all four of the releases from Forever Mood, the collection by Jackie Ina. So I was excited about this. I immediately said, I just want to support. I don't care if the notes are, you know, six week old trash, skunk, booty, butt cheeks. I don't care. I'm buying it. So Jackie Ina is just someone very special to me. She is my first introduction to beauty YouTube. And I mean, back in the day when she was still living in Hawaii in the army, recording on, you know, very low quality cell phones. That's all we had. But she taught me makeup. She taught me how to apply it, what works in my skin tone, all the above. And if you're a woman of color, you probably have a very similar story related to this particular influencer. So if you're like, 
18 years old or 20, I get it. You may not understand what she means to this space and this community. But if you are of a certain age, then you know. If you know, you know, all right? So uh, let me just start by saying that the entire collection is solid, okay? It is solid. If I didn't like them, you would know. But however, comma, the order in which I thought I would be loving these and enjoying these are actually in reverse order. So let's get into a ranking. Before we actually do that, let me just state that these price points, $79, she's giving us 50 mils under $80, okay? I love the bottles, that's just me, okay? Me personally. However, the scents are not going to be childlike. They're not going to like, listen, these are for the sophisticated grown woman in you, all of them. They all wear with a certain amount of like an airy quality to them. These are not going to be beast mold, loud, heavy hitting fragrances. If that's what you thought you were going to get, then this probably is not the collection for you. Now I would say the most prominent wearing one is going to be the one in the pink bottle, you guys. I was expecting this to be frou-frou, la-la, gourmand, but as she began to drop the content for each one individually, it's just like, okay, ood? Um, and she didn't mention anything about it being decadent. Uh, she just made it seem like this is going to be like a very sure of herself type of woman. And then when I look at the notes, okay, red velvet cake, we've got the pear, we've got some floral notes, we've got ood. This is going to be the most polarizing one. If you are not familiar with ouds, if you have none in your collection, or if you know that you do not like oud, this is not going to be a safe blind buy. You actually get the oud in here. It is done in a very feminine, light wearing way compared to just your normal niche ouds. Like it's not going to wear that dark, bold, and heavy, but you can absolutely pick up on an oudie presence here. I feel like the... Lancome uh, with the iris and the oud. The oudy quality of that, I will say, maybe think of it a, a peg or two down from the oud in that particular fragrance. So you are getting more so a sweet pear and oud scent. So for me, this is actually a little unique to anything in my collection. And at first I was like, mm, I don't know. I don't know about this because I was expecting something maybe sweeter, maybe a little bit more gourmand. Um, but this was the first one to arrive. So I had like two days in between this one and the others, um, you know, as far as the arrival. So I got to spend two full days with this one and I just kept going back and spraying it, going back and spraying it. And it's like, it really grew on me really fast. So this one definitely was a success for me. But the others, I almost wasn't even studying them, okay? I was just gonna get them just to get them. And I said, you know, if I don't like them, I will do a giveaway. I just knew I was gonna love this one. I do love it. But these other ones, I love them even more, all right? So let's get into the one I like the second best. This is You Remind Me. Oh, did I say this one is I Am Her, okay? Pink bottle, I Am Her. Okay, back to You Remind Me. So You Remind Me is definitely for the girl who wants a clean, fresh take on fragrance this is going to be the clean reserve girlies they want something clean every day fresh out the shower you can wear this to the gym you can wear this to work you can wear this wherever like this is going to be beautiful for layering and i really do like the way this develops on my skin so you remind me has keynotes of apricot skin orange blossom and sensual musk above all you're going to get a really sensual clean musk you do have the florals just kind of weaved in throughout but it's not going to come off as something overly floral the florals are there to give it a very feminine touch a very gorgeous feminine quality it's a very easy to wear floral musk scent and if you're in the market for something that really does smell beautiful um and clean then at this price point i think this is a fabulous option okay so you remind me, clean musk girl, like freshies, you know, we, we have to have those in our collection. And I feel that this one will definitely be getting used up this spring and summer. So the next one, this is the one I thought I was going to like the least you all. Hard to get. If you ride with me, you already know. I listen, the lemon and these lemon cupcake citrus, vanilla gourmands, they are very hit or miss, usually a miss, just because my skin really does pull forth the citruses. They can very quickly become 
quite cleaning products, okay? We're, we're wiping down the kitchen counter, um, or room spray, you know, we're trying to invigorate the household from the, the smell of your cat or whatever. <laughs> And I was so happy that I did not get that from this scent. So this is going to be your whipped vanilla, jasmine and citrus zest. I feel like this is reminding me of kind of like lemon cupcake vibes, but the way that she has balanced this with the jasmine keeps this really well balanced. The citrus does not get too strong. The gourmand aspect of it doesn't get too sweet. It's just gorgeous. If you are in the market for a citrus gourmand, like one of those Hufflepuff type scents, where it's a lot fresher, but you're still getting your gourmand decadent vibe, then this one is one I highly recommend and for a fraction of the price, okay? So I was really impressed by this one. I feel like all of these, you are fine with overspraying. Even the Oud one, to me, the longevity on all of these are giving me about five hours, very moderate. I don't think any of these, as of right now, they are brand new Fred Ashford Press releases are really long wearing, um, but I will say moderate. I don't think any of these were giving me like two hours and I couldn't smell them. That was just not the case. Moderate wear, overspray, get your life, because this one I really do like and I was expecting to like this one the least. Now the one, honey, when I say it was purchased, but not even on the radar, it's my favorite out of the whole collection. And it really does seem to be consensus going on with this doggone NDA. I don't know if it was just the purple, but I don't know. I didn't even look at the nose. I just bought it. It wasn't even one I thought I would be phased by. Y'all, when I got this notes unseen, sprayed this on, I was just like, what the heck? What is this? Y'all, tobacco flower, vanilla, rum, spiced rum. Well, no damn wonder. This smells so unique to the others in the collection. I don't think I've quite smelled anything like this before. If you love your vanillas, then this is the one, okay? It's like the color of the bottles, they are playing with you. They, you, it, maybe with the exception of this one, you kind of knew you were going to get lemony something, but honey, this NDA is it. This is my favorite out of the bunch. One that I just, it completely took me by surprise. So it really does come off as unique. It's very sexy. She's very self-assured. And this is like Jackie Ani in a bottle. Like she, she not getting her self-esteem from nobody else but herself. Okay, inside, inside work, inside job. That is what NDA is all about. She is stunning. Tobacco flower, spice rum, whipped vanilla. What more do I need to say? If it sounds like it might be your vibe, it probably is. If you have to rush out and get anything from this collection, this is gonna be the one to get your nose on or to purchase, all right? Let me just take some deep breaths, okay? Woo-sa, deep breath. This doggone, oh my God, okay. Navitus, let me just say, Navitus has done it again. Mr. Bertrand Duchafor has done it again. Gabby, Gabriella, honey, she has done it again. Melon Kiss from the House of Navitus is magnifique. It is so delicious that I literally could not stop spraying this perfume. Oh my goodness. You know what? I love me a good melon scent. Honeydew, sign me up. I only have one in my collection, but this one wears so sweet and so much more smooth and uh, it's giving like melon honeydew airheads. If you could imagine what they would taste like. You know how you chew airheads? It's got this airy quality airheads, clearly wrapped up in this decadent, sweet candy chewing sensation. It's gorgeous. So let me, let me tell you the notes. First of all, bergamot and melon is at the top. So I would imagine in addition to honeydew, there is like this hodgepodge of melon because you get the honeydew, but you also almost pick up on like watermelon. And like there could be a multitude of melons in here. So if you are looking for a gorgeous melon fragrance, if you love the way batik smells, you know, the watermelon scent, you're going to love this. 
the coconut milk in this fragrance doesn't come off as anything super uh, like tonic or anything like that, but you do get this beautiful air of coconut, um, you know, in the scent. It doesn't come up quite like a coconut water. I think definitely coconut milk is a good way to describe it, but it's not taking over the scent. So if you're not a fan of coconut milk per se, or you don't like a like tonic note in your perfume, I don't think you have to fear this. This is just smoothing out you know, the, the bergamot and the melon uh, in the fragrance. Also adding to the smoothness is a creamed honey. So again, if you're not a honey fan, fear not. This honey does not take over the scent. You almost have to be told what note is in here to give it such a gorgeous sweetness and it's going to be the honey. It also has a very beautiful and prominent vanilla in the base. And y'all, I just think that this is so beautiful. They don't state that there's a musk or anything in here, but in the base, I pick up on something just slightly woody or musky, not anything that's going to be overbearing, but I do pick up on a little something other than what the notes are providing. Again, they're stating melon, pretty much bergamot, coconut milk, cream honey, and vanilla, but there is something underlying in the base that really is helping to ground this. It doesn't wear super juvenile. It, it's very fruity, fun, sexy, very grown up and just sweet and irresistible. Like, oh my God, like this is just gonna be it. <laughs> this is just gonna be it for spring. I don't have the information as far as the release date. We got these a little early in PR. So of course, as soon as Melon Kiss is released, I will update you in the community tab as always, but you guys, solid release and don't pussyfoot around and wait if you want this it's going to sell out trust me because i know i'm about to be hyping it up this is beautiful and yeah you need it and don't forget you can always save 10 percent with an abatis if you use my discount code all the information will be in the description box now let's talk about something else new from Nabatis. just hold on to your seats and i know this is a very long haul but we got a lot of good stuff to get through Hold on to your seats, fasten your little seat belts, because when I tell you, I got all six of them, but I can only hold three in my hand. <laughs> the Navitas All Over Hair and Body Sprays. Oh my God. So I know, I know, you're looking at the price tag and you're like, for a, a body mist? Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh no, don't think bath and body works body mist, okay? These are going to be a lot more comparable to say the body mist you get from your Tom Ford's or your Chanel's. So they are pricier, but like what the, this is like wearing the perfume. I feel like I have Chocolate Queen in my hand. Of course I had to start with her. This is my favorite chocolate. Um, chocolate Queen, I wore this last night. First of all, the atomizers. This is a continuous spray. Look at this. Whole room will smell like chocolate, but it's okay. Look at this. Okay, it will just continue, continue, continue to go on. And the wearing experience, you guys, is like wearing the perfume. If you want the experience of these fragrances that have been released, but you don't want to spend the coins, it's just not in your budget. The economy is a shifting. <laughs> um hello and and they are running a phenomenal promotional sale so i'm here to give it give you my honest opinion these body sprays are strong okay they put the x-rays in here they are long wearing did please get body mist like bath and body work spray out of your head these are going to wear a lot more like a perfume same smell, spread everywhere, liberally. Spray your hair. You don't gotta worry about drying out your hair, your hair falling out. <laughs> you can liberally spread it on your clothes without it creating, you know, those extra oil spots, which I really have to be careful about because I tend to spray really close to my garments. Like this is it. Oh my God. And a note from the brand, mind your sprays. Again, not like Bath and Body Works. This is not a whole bunch of water and, and alcohol. And it, like these wear very prominently, you guys. You don't even need a lot. Like now I'm about to start choking on the scent of chocolate because I could have just let the spray 
spray till the whole bottle come out. It is continuous and it is such a luxurious experience. I know a lot of you all have asked about Monte Castanade. It's a possibility. It depends on how the first batch of these do. So, you know, it's completely up to the brand, but it's a possibility. Okay, I'm gonna just put that out there. So y'all, it, it comes in Chocolate Queen. Um, Venom of Love is another offering. You've got your Milik Stas body spray. And these have been in production and they've been working on this for many, many months. So it's the, the older, uh, you know, releases that you see coming out in the all over sprays first, depending on how those do, they will launch some of the newer releases. So like I said, Chocolate Queen, Milik Stas, Viva More, uh, Ambrosia Imperial, Viva More and the Wheat Royale. So you guys, again, take advantage of the launch promotion. You really get to save, even if you buy just one, the discount automatically applies for right now. I am not sure of the date that this promo will end, but if I'm not mistaken, those details are on the Navitas website. So I'm telling you, if these are some of your favorite fra fragrance scents, go ahead and get this because it's almost like owning a second bottle of the X-ray. Okay, phenomenal body sprays, you guys, phenomenal. So let's get into a designer fragrance that is, oh my God, it's so beautiful, you guys. This is going to be Donna Karen, Palo Santo, and Cashmere. So I have wanted a Palo Santo fragrance, like dominant, prominent. Don't have one. This is very woody, you guys, but, but as we all know, woody fragrances, even unisex can just lean a little masculine. We can't help but to associate the two or it's accompanied with the boatload of florals to where it's more like a sheep row or it wears very floral woody. This one is a very feminine, gorgeous, beautiful, feminine woody scent, okay? And she did not come to play. This smells so sexy. The sillage on this thing is so beautiful. Now my bottle arrived damaged, so we're gonna be reaching out to, to Nordstrom. I don't know in what world would you put a perfume, I don't care what kind of box is boxed in, you put it in a bag and deliver it, I don't care. I don't care if it's local, okay? We need a box in a box. So my bottle was damaged. Like the this part should have like the little black ring around it here. Um, so my top, it doesn't even go on all the way. So yeah, um, <laughs> but the scent itself, you guys, you know, usually I'm not a fan of the designer fragrances. Like you, you gotta give me something different than a sweet white floor because that's all they seem to regurgitate. They love sticking with trends and that's the trend right now and they have, killed us with it okay i'm done it od okay so cashmere palo santo opens with notes of peach and you do get this really sweet beautiful juicy peach in the opening but then you have cashmere wood and labdanum in the mid and the labdanum is not going to wear super heavy dark leathery it's not going to be like that again designer fragrance very feminine and they're not going overboard on some of these more challenging notes so it's there giving it a very sexy quality, but you get lots of cashmere wood. You also have Palo Santo, of course, in the base and you have lots of vanilla. It's very woody, it's very vanilla forward. It's musky, I mean, it's a little balmy. It's gorgeous, as the bottle you know, would suggest. Like, bravo, it is gorgeous. I think they did a wonderful job with this one. And my first cashmere or Donna Karen, you know, perfume, but, they have parted ways with the whole Estee Lauder, you know, ownership. Uh, so this, these new releases are under the new umbrella and I don't know if this making a difference. I have no idea, but this one, <laughs> they did a bang up job, you know, for a designer scent, especially. Again, this one is Cashmere Palo Santo by Donna Karen. Next up is going to be from the house of Hermetica and this is Bloom Tea. If you're a tea lover, then listen up. So this one is very gorgeous. I think this wears unisex, but leaning a little feminine. So this actually has a white lavender. So, you know, lavender can definitely give something super aromatic that will make it lean a little masculine most often. It's very hard to pull off a more feminine leaning lavender fragrance. Uh, but they have pulled it off quite beautifully in this one with the use of the white lavender. So 
So this one also comes off as very mossy. You've got some clary sage in the opening. You also have rose, pear, and geranium. I love, you know, a, a geranium and rose. You really do pick up on that in this fragrance, which gives it a little oomph. Like you can really pick up on the smell of this one. As I mentioned before, a lot of these don't project really loudly because they are very much so oil based, almost wear like a serum on your skin. Um, and then you have a very mossy quality about it as well. So you do have to be a lover of more mossy, green tea fragrances uh, to enjoy this one. But you also have some tonka bean warming it up in the base with some musk. So, so this one is very mossy. It's aromatic. It's musky. There's an earthy quality about it. There is some sweetness, you know, some, some fresh and soft spicy tones to it. If you're looking for a tea fragrance that just wears a little different, a little earthy. If you love scents like that, I think you would really enjoy Bloom Tea. Again, this one is from the House of Hermetica. This one was gifted to me so kindly by uh, Twisted Lily. So if you are interested in purchasing this one, do know that you can save 10% when you use my discount code. Any details, of course, will be in the description box as always. All right, you guys, so that is our video for today. We have some beauties in this haul right here, all right? So drop me a comment, let me know if you have any of these, are they hits, are they misses, or have I put them on your radar? Are you interested? Are you intrigued? I'm dying to know, drop me a comment, you guys. Also, again, make sure you are subscribed to the channel, be sure notification bell is turned on and set to all. And last but not least, if you find any value in the content, as always, give it a big thumbs up, it helps my channel to grow. Thank you for 32K, by the way, I have, reached my marker of my 300th video. That's a lot of videos. And the same day I hit 32K. So you know what I tell y'all? Hard work, hard work, consistency is everything. And I just wanna thank you all for showing up for me consistently, okay? So that's, that's most of it, all right? Thank you, I love you all YouTube and I will catch you guys on the next one.